The dividend capture strategy is a fairly simple technique where you buy a stock just in time to receive its dividend distribution. After locking in this dividend, you then sell the stock and move on to another stock with an upcoming dividend. In theory, this strategy lets you collect dividend payouts practically every day, as long as there are stocks paying them, which sounds pretty good, right? Well, that's exactly why we're taking a closer look at this approach today. In this video, I'll give you a detailed explanation of the dividend capture strategy and exactly how to execute it. Then we're gonna take a look at some of the numbers and data to figure out if this is a worthwhile strategy in practice. Finally, we'll wrap things up with some dividend capture tips to help you maximize your earnings from this strategy if you choose to give it a try. So if you're ready to start collecting some crazy dividends, stay tuned. So the dividend capture strategy might be one of the most simple investing strategies there is. You just have to buy a stock in time to capture the dividend payout. Unlike other strategies, which often require some level of fundamental analysis or in-depth research, you can pull off the dividend capture strategy with very little legwork. You just need to have a good understanding of one thing, and that's the ex-dividend date. The ex-dividend date is simply the date at which time owning the stock no longer makes you eligible to receive a dividend. In other words, you have to own the stock the day before the ex-dividend date to secure your dividend payout. So here's a simple timeline of how the dividend capture strategy could work. First, a company will announce its dividend. They'll announce the dividend amount, the ex-dividend date, and the date at which they plan on distributing that dividend. This declaration of a dividend typically happens at least a few weeks before the ex-dividend date. So, once a dividend is declared, you have until the ex-dividend date to purchase that stock and become eligible for the dividend. The most important part is that you own the stock at market close the day before the ex-dividend date. This is because the day before the ex-dividend date is the day that the company will make a record of its shareholders, and these shareholders are the ones who will receive the dividends. So keep this in mind, if you buy a stock and sell the day before the ex-dividend date or any time earlier, you will not get the dividend. You have to hold on to that stock until the ex-dividend date. After this point, you've locked in your dividend, so you're free to sell the share on the ex-dividend date or any time after it. So to return to our sample timeline, when a company announces a dividend, you have a few weeks to purchase that stock but you have to make sure you're holding the stock before the ex-dividend date. At market close on the day before the ex-dividend date, the company will take note of its shareholders for dividend distributions. Starting on the ex-dividend date, you can no longer secure that previously announced dividend. Since your holdings were recorded the day before, you can sell your stock starting on this day and still expect to receive the dividend on the announced payout date. And that's really all there is to it. There are literally hundreds of websites out there that you can use to find stocks with upcoming dividends. You just need to find a dividend X date calendar and plan your stock purchases accordingly. I did a little bit of searching and came across one I like at Benzinga.com. It has a pretty clean and thorough list of the dividends and shows the approximate dividend yield of each stock, which is a helpful metric that I didn't see many other sites offering. And as you can see, there are tons of stocks going X dividend on a daily basis. So many that you would have absolutely no problem buying a stock daily, securing a dividend, then selling the stock the next day and purchasing a new stock in time for a new dividend. So the real question becomes, does the dividend capture strategy work? And this is where things get complicated. It's a simple strategy and it's a surefire way to collect tons of dividend payments throughout the month. But in order for it to be profitable and actually be worth your time and effort, we have to consider some of the other factors at play here. And the three things we have to consider here are price adjustments based on the theory of an efficient market, the cost of taxes and trading fees, and the overall market sentiment on a given day. So let's take a closer look. First is the theory that markets are perfectly efficient, and this is one that dividend naysayers use pretty often against dividend stocks. This theory assumes that if markets are perfectly efficient, then the price of a stock will decrease by an amount equal to the value of its dividend once that dividend is paid out. So if a $10 stock announced a $1 dividend, as soon as the dividend payouts were locked in for shareholders, this theory suggests that the perfectly efficient market will drop the stock price to $9 to compensate for that $1 dividend per share payout. I found two studies that attempted to measure the impact on stock price after going ex-dividend. The first is a study performed with data from 1962 to 1987. This confirmed that through those periods, the price drop of a stock was not significantly different from the value of its dividend. In other words, a stock dropping in price equal to its dividend payout was pretty much to be expected. And this would suggest that the dividend capture strategy doesn't really work. After all, if you bought our sample stock for $10 and then got a $1 dividend, then the stock dropped to $9, you're still at $10 total. So if this is going to be the case, then a dividend capture strategy certainly isn't worth the effort. However, I found another study performed in 2007 and 2008 that actually found the opposite. This study randomly tracked 100 stocks from the New York Stock Exchange, analyzing the price impact of dividend payouts over two years. Their research found the markets to be what they call semi-efficient. For the year 2008, they found that just like the previous study, stocks typically dropped by an amount equal to the value of their dividend. But in the year 2007, they actually dropped by an amount less than the value of their dividend. 
So in these cases, if you used the dividend capture strategy, you would have made a profit. And although it seems that in most cases the stocks react predictably to a dividend payout, this second study proves that there is actually some inefficiency in the markets, which means there is money to be made by the dividend capture strategy. Of course, the second study also brings up the point of the taxation on dividends. Since dividends will be taxed, the dividend value to investors might be less than what is actually paid, which theoretically explains a slightly lesser drop in stock price. But seeing as taxes and costs are the next big factor to consider when it comes to the dividend capture strategy, let's dig into that some more. Taxes are the heavy burden at the core of any stock market investment, especially when it comes to dividend capture. And here's the problem. The dividend capture strategy makes you ineligible for any of the more favorable tax rates. For example, consider a stock that pays a qualified dividend, which includes most common stocks. The tax on this dividend would be the long-term capital gains tax, which for most investors, including myself, is 15%. But in order to get this special tax rate, you have to hold the stock for at least 60 days around the ex-dividend date. So if you bought the stock the day before the ex-dividend date, you would have to hold it for 59 more days to get that qualified dividend tax rate. Or you'd have to buy 60 days before the ex-dividend date in order to sell on the ex-dividend date and still get your dividend at the qualified dividend tax rate. With the dividend capture strategy, you're typically going to be buying and selling stocks very quickly, almost always holding them for less than 60 days. And this means that instead of that qualified dividend long-term capital gains tax rate, you're going to be paying income tax on all of those dividends you've received. For me, this is 22%, which is 50% more than that capital gains tax rate. So this means in order to make a profit from the dividend capture strategy, you have to make sure that your post-tax dividend distributions make up for any drop in stock price that you see in the ex-dividend date. With our same example from before, a $10 stock paying a $1 dividend and dropping to $9 actually leaves you with a loss. You'll be paying income tax on that $1 dividend, leaving you with just $9.78. So the odds are definitely stacking up against us for trying to profit off of the dividend capture strategy. If you're trading somewhere that charges fees, then it's going to be even more difficult to make the strategy work. But there's still one more factor to consider, and that's the day-to-day -day price movements of the overall market. If you happen to pick up a stock on a good day and the ex-dividend date falls on a red day in the market, that stock may end up falling even more than its dividend is worth. So now you might be selling at an even bigger loss to snag that same dividend. And this is something that's definitely even harder to predict than just the effect of the dividend payout on the stock itself. So when you factor in the expected drop in stock price, the cost of taxes and trading fees, and the unpredictability of the overall markets, there really are a lot of variables going on here that make it difficult to pull off a dividend capture strategy with any meaningful returns. But I love the idea of daily dividends, so let's take a closer look at four ways we can protect ourselves against these risks, and perhaps still find a way to eke out some money from the dividend capture strategy. The first way is going to involve vetting some of your dividend candidates so that you can identify the ones that are going to drop as little as possible on those ex-dividend dates. And there are two simple strategies I would personally use in this scenario. The first is to use large cap stocks for the dividend capture strategy. Large cap stocks tend to be less volatile simply as a result of their size. Large cap dividend payers are also known to be more stable than large caps in general, so this could theoretically make them better candidates for the dividend capture strategy. Of course, this is no guarantee and purely my own opinion, but I think the larger the market cap, the safer a candidate for a dividend capture. After using this as a rule of thumb for selecting a dividend capture prospect, I would further screen the stock by analyzing what's happened to it on previous ex-dividend dates. To give you a quick example, I pulled up Coca-Cola's dividend history on Nasdaq.com. Since their recently announced dividend hasn't happened yet, we can take a look at the price history around the previous dividend date to identify if this will be a good candidate for dividend capture. The record date for the previous dividend was September 15th, which means the 14th was the ex-dividend date, and the 11th was the last day to secure that dividend. Moving over to Yahoo Finance to look at the historical price data, we can see that Coca-Cola actually ended up trading at higher prices on the ex-dividend date. Although there was definitely room to lose on this dividend capture if you happened to buy and sell at the wrong times each day. But if you timed it right, you could have definitely made a profit on this dividend capture. The second way to improve your chances of success with the dividend capture strategy is to perform it in a tax advantaged account, like a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA. This way you won't be paying taxes on any of the dividends you're securing with the strategy. This will instantly widen your margins for trading in and out of stocks, and it could be the game changing approach that makes or breaks the strategy. It just depends on whether you want to use your retirement savings for the somewhat controversial technique, and if your IRA even gives you the ability to do so. For example, my Roth IRA is set up with M1 Finance, which I love for several reasons, but it has got to be the absolute worst investing platform for trading individual stocks. So as much as I'd like to experiment with this inside of my Roth IRA, it would just be a huge headache to manage. The third strategy for success with the dividend capture strategy is to exclusively target special dividends. Special dividends are dividends that a company pays out on an irregular basis in addition to its standard dividend payouts. 
in most cases, they're way larger than the usual dividend distributions, which means there's a bigger percentage to be gained with the dividend capture. Of course, these stocks can still fall victim to the ex-dividend date price adjustment, so that's something you'll have to look out for. You should also know that if a company pays a special dividend higher than 25% of the stock's value, the ex-dividend date moves until after the dividend is paid, so you'll also have to hold these stocks longer in order to obtain the larger dividend. And the fourth strategy I've got for you regarding profiting from the dividend capture strategy actually doesn't involve buying the stock itself. Since the stock so often drops on the ex-dividend date, another strategy is to buy options of a stock so that you can profit when that drop does happen. An option is essentially a contract that you purchase, which secures you the right to sell a stock at a certain price. So prior to the ex-dividend date, you would buy an option at or near the current stock price, securing you the ability to sell the stock at its current price. This contract remains open for several days, so once the ex-dividend date happens and the stock price drops, your options contract allows you to still sell that stock at the earlier higher price. But since you don't actually own the stock, the profit comes from selling this options contract to somebody else who will theoretically cover some of their losses with that trade. I cannot personally encourage this because I know very little about the world of options, but what I do know is that there are added risks and costs involved that make it more complicated than the regular dividend capture strategy. So if this sounds interesting to you, just make sure you do your homework before jumping in. And actually, I'll probably cover options at some point on this channel, so if you want me to push that up on my agenda, just leave me a comment below. But those are the four strategies that you can leverage to improve your profits with the dividend capture strategy. I also have one more warning for you if you're thinking about trying it out. Do not use the dividend capture strategy on MLPs or master limited partnerships. MLPs are stocks that pay fairly high dividends, but they have unusual tax repercussions. Most of their dividends are considered returns of capital, which means they lower the cost basis of your investment. So if you perform a dividend capture with these stocks and you sell the stock shortly after, you might actually owe capital gains tax on the stock even if you sold it at a loss. If you want to learn more about navigating these stocks in particular, I have a whole video about them on my channel that you can check out. Not ideal for dividend capture, but definitely worth looking into if you're a dividend investor. Overall, the dividend investing strategy isn't foolproof, but there may be something to it with the right strategy. And if you're like me, you're probably thinking that there's got to be a way to make this system work in your favor. And lucky for you, I was curious enough to try it out for real. In fact, I started the month of November with $100 and followed a strict dividend capture strategy on Robinhood for the whole month. I'm about to wrap up this experiment, and if you'd like to see how much I made with the dividend capture strategy and whether this thing can really work, make sure you subscribe to the channel to catch that update when it comes. Until then, let me know in the comments if you're going to experiment with this strategy at all. If you are, good luck, I wish you many hefty dividends, and I will see you in the next video.